My name is Dominic McKenzie. I'm uh, the partner in charge of Wills and Probate Estates in House and Solicitors. 20 years experience of making wills and dealing with elderly people and administration of estates. Why take the risk? If you do something wrong, then you pass away without having changed your will or there being a problem with the will, then in those circumstances you may leave your loved ones actually disentitled to your estate. If you use a solicitor, they should firstly know exactly what they're doing. They shouldn't make mistakes, but if they do make a mistake, which has been negligent, then your beneficiaries have the benefit of the solicitor's insurance, which will cover them for anything that was dramatically wrong in the will. Joint care and assets tend to pass outside the scope of a will. This means that if you have a bank account with your son or daughter, but you leave your whole estate to your spouse, then in that example, the son or daughter would end up owning all of the money in the joint bank account and the spouse would get none of it. At Ice & Harrison, our standard prices are for a single will, £125 plus VAT, and for mirror wills, £175 plus VAT. What I would strongly urge is that you are very wary of anyone charging ridiculous amounts of money to make a will. It's absolutely vital that you do review your will on a regular basis. If life circumstances change, for example, there's a divorce or a separation, then you should absolutely check your will, and if need be, you should make a new will, because you would find that, that your existing will probably leaves your entire estate to the last person on earth you would want to receive it, that being your estranged spouse or partner. If you divorce, that's a different matter, but you should still review. But if you separate and you don't divorce, then you must, must look at your will and probably you should be making a new will. Nowadays, we tend to send a draft will out to you. We also send a copy of the signed will, which would have our details on the back of it. But we would also advise you to show your will to your children, no obligation for you to do that, or to at least tell them where the will is. You can also, nowadays, register your will on the National Wills Database, which is something that Ice and House is a part of, um, and that's a very easy and inexpensive way of, of making sure that the will doesn't go unnoticed in the event of your death. you should keep your will at the solicitors and keep a copy at home. Very regularly, and indeed increasingly regularly, we're seeing situations where somebody's kept their will at home and then there's no sign of the will when they pass away. There is a presumption of what's called destruction in those circumstances, which means that if the will can't be found in the event of your death and it's been at home, then it will be assumed by the law that the will was destroyed by you during your lifetime. That might be the case, it might not be the case, but my strongest advice is that certainly at Ice and Harrison, we don't charge to store your will, we would, uh, we would advise you to take advantage of that service. Executors are the people who you choose to administer your estate for you. My own advice is that if you have able-bodied, able-minded children and spouses who you like, then I would personally appoint them to be your executors. You can appoint solicitors, um, but I would say that that should be the exception rather than the rule. If you are single without children, or if there are particular complexities or disagreements amongst your beneficiaries, then the solicitors may be the appropriate course of action. A common myth is that your executors can't be beneficiaries of your will. 
they absolutely can be and more often than not probably are going to be executors of your will. For example, if you're leaving your estate to your spouse or to your children, what you can't do is have the witnesses being beneficiaries of the will. And this is where the misconception has arisen over the years. You absolutely don't have to come into the office. It may be preferable for you, it may be preferable for us in certain circumstances for people to come into the office. However, you may be infirm, you may be housebound, it might be impossible for you to get into, the, into our offices. In those circumstances, we'll arrange a home visit and we'll do that at no additional charge for you in general, in general terms. It might be that you're a busy working person or that you've got children to look after. It might be that you can't get into the office Monday to Friday, nine to seven o'clock. In those circumstances, we can do things through the post, through email, through telephone calls. We've had to get into the 21st century as a profession and we will do what we can to accommodate those people with busy 21st century lifestyles. If you die without living well, then what are called the intestacy rules will apply. I'm not going to cause any mythology here or cause any great concern. Sometimes the intestacy rules can work. For example, if you're leaving everything to your spouse or you're leaving everything to your children, it might be that the intestacy rules would work for you. However, unforeseen circumstances and consequences can arise. For example, you might be separated from your spouse. If you're separated from your spouse but not divorced, then that spouse is going to end up with maybe all of your estate or at least the vast majority of your estate. It might be that you have a brother or sister that you haven't seen for 20, 30 years before you die. It might be that that person would be the person entitled to the intestacy provisions. Therefore, my strongest advice has to be that you shouldn't take chances and you should make a will. You may not have to make a new will if you get a divorce. What you should certainly do is review your existing will. Your divorced spouse will be treated as having died at the date of the decree absolute for the purposes of your will. This means that they won't generally inherit under the terms of the will. However, there may be other unforeseen aspects, or at least unforeseen to you, that may need some consideration. What, for example, if your will leaves assets to your spouse's children who aren't your children. We would always say, review your will. There's no harm in reviewing your will. It shouldn't cost you anything to review your will. If you make a will, then there'll be some modest charges to pay. But reviewing shouldn't cost, and it will at least give you peace of mind and security that everything is in place and in order. My do's and don'ts of LPAs may differ from other people's do's and don'ts, but my absolute is that if you have a spouse or children who you trust and who you like, then you should absolutely do property and financial affairs lasting powers of attorney. That is an absolute must and a no-brainer. If you don't trust your wife or you don't trust your children, then don't appoint them. I personally wouldn't rush or do as a matter of course, health and welfare lasting powers of attorney. I used to be entirely cynical as to their use and I wouldn't uh, advise people to set them up. However, I am conscious that circumstances are changing. I believe that social workers and care workers have been on courses concerning health and welfare lasting powers of attorney and are sometimes using the absence of health and welfare lasting power of attorney as a barrier to discussing things with family members. In my view, this is absolutely ridiculous and flies in the face of common sense, but it is something whereby I remain cynical about how much use health and welfare lasting powers of attorney actually are. If you want full peace of mind, then do set them up, but be wary of paying through the nose for such things. It should be relatively inexpensive to set up certainly property and financial affairs lasting powers of attorney and if you required both types of power of attorney because it's something that you wanted to ensure that absolutely everything was in place, no stone unturned, then you should be able to get a competitive quote from a solicitor to do both types of lasting powers of attorney.